as yes. well. For the average patient, knowing that there's no such thing as an average patient, uh, for the average patient, uh, when, we, when we think about uh, the need for preemptive um, uh, work with uh, colon cancer awareness, um, what are some of the, the things that, uh, that we highlight, uh, that you highlight you know, my time is uh, limited here, and I really wanted, uh, struggled with making the biggest impact I possibly uh, could. I uh, really am a very strong believer in preemptive measures. Uh, the best surgery is no surgery, but certainly if it gets to surgery, we have uh, very unique and uh, uh, excellent talent here, which we'll get into shortly. But just uh, briefly, a, a few things. Uh, one, um, almost all colon cancers, certainly by the time you get to surgery, have uh, um, been diagnosed by colonoscopy. Colonoscopy is a very, very valuable tool, uh, very important um, uh, uh, to people's care initially and in follow-up. Very important to have a very good colonoscopy done. The preps are vitally important. Unfortunately, they've been sort of massaged over the years to make it easier for patients, and, and that affects adversely patients whose gastrointestinal tracts function just a little bit slower, maybe require more. Um, but uh, definitely, if uh, at the time of colonoscopy we can't see, then we can't see. And uh, then we either have to redo and redouble our efforts to see because sometimes you can't, the preps don't work well because there is something hindering that prep. And so a week prior, I advise all patients, no seeds, kernels, hulls, nuts, popcorn, start drinking lots of fluids. Take the preps very seriously because, again, uh, the only thing worse than having one colonoscopy is having two colonoscopies. Sure. Um, but say um, you get through the colonoscopy and um, there is a polyp, maybe too large uh, to be resected uh, through the scope. It's biopsied, it's found to be a malignancy, and that's when uh, the process starts. Um, first, as a patient, you'll have a, a CAT scan uh, performed to make sure that the tumor is gone uh, nowhere else. Um, and if it has, there are, um, uh, you know, obviously that ignites a certain different uh, path pathway, which also uh, will include surgery. Um, Another uh, very important preemptive uh, uh, thing that all is at, it's accessible to all patients, and that's diet. Uh, more and more Mediterranean diet has been kind of forcing its way into our uh, society. It's based on uh, research and patient outcomes, um, decreasing uh, colon cancer rates as a result, uh, improved longevity, improved quality of life. So um, that's super important, um, and, and that diet is published everywhere uh, on the Internet. There are authors who've taken it and researched cultures and found which cultures do the best, live the longest, have the most cancer-free, and all of that information is out there in an effort to avoid, um, you know, uh, not just colon cancer but other health care uh, uh, emergencies. <clears throat> but as we get... No. As we get to um, needing an operation uh, and assuming the, the CAT scans are all normal and show no spread, then uh, we at Indiana employ a, a system of enhanced uh, recovery uh, for patients. Uh, and this is something that has been researched very heavily over the years. It's, um, it's a multidisciplinary approach to uh, enhancing patient recovery, uh, less pain, uh, eating sooner, recovery faster, smaller incisions. Um, so it, it's kind of recovering from surgery has morphed into something that was 7 to 10 to 12 days long. Now if uh, uh, I do an operation on a Tuesday, most patients uh, are ready, to go, ready and willing to go home, wanting to go home by Thursday morning. Now, there are, there are some exceptions, and, and I think all of our uh, practitioners, certainly Dr. Clark, Dr. Bilamoria, uh, and Gudetti have uh, found similar uh, benefits to this ERAS system. I should say that if anyone is going for their surgery outside of the community, that would be uh, something that you would have to insist that um, 
any surgical facility is going to employ to your benefit. Um, but with minimally invasive disease, with minimally invasive surgery, sorry, um, the incisions are smaller, the dissection is smaller, blood loss is less, blood loss is less, and uh, patients go home sooner, recover faster, and are able to do better. But unfortunately, with the diagnosis of cancer, um, having a, it doesn't end at a successful operation. And I'm I'm happy and proud to say that here at Indiana. We are really, really doing it well, and that's uh, bearing out in, in uh, uh, statistics. It's bearing out in patient satisfaction. Um, so it's been a very gratifying uh, thing to be a part of. Thanks largely to robotics. Uh, we got our first one about seven years ago. We're the busiest uh, robotic center in a tri-state area as a single site. We're so successful that uh, now we have a second um, mirror image uh, robot. Um, and uh, we've been able to recruit um, at a rate and for specialties that we would never have been able to, uh, to uh, enjoy But as a community. But let's um, get back to surgery. Um, the incisions are smaller. Patients have less pain. Uh, they recover faster. They go home. And, uh, and then we follow, follow up. After three to five days, everything that we removed uh, at the time of surgery that has been sent to pathology. We have a comprehensive report. It's uh, tested aggressively, vigorously for all sorts of tumor markers um, that the oncologists uh, would go over, and it impacts how you're treated medically. If it is a tumor that has gone through the colon wall or into the nodes or worse, into the liver or lungs, um, it, that does those markers uh, heavily impact the kind of treatment you're going to get. Um, if the tumor is a right colon uh, tumor uh, or a transverse colon tumor or a sigmoid or left colon tumor, then the treatment is, is all uh, basically uh, the same. You resect it, uh, the, the tumor, to wide margins. We do a, um, a connection. It's highly technical. We have more technologically at our disposal now to assure a successful connection than ever before. The implication is to avoid everyone's favorite, a colostomy. Um, and we've been able to, able to do that uh, reproducibly and very successfully uh, in our community. Now, when we start talking in, about rectal cancers, and they really deserve um, a, a lengthier mention, I can't tell you as an endoscopist how many people I see yearly with rectal bleeding, rectal bleeding that people have attributed to, of course, hemorrhoids. And... Um, they come in finally for colonoscopy because it just won't go away no matter what they do. Um, and uh, sure enough, either on um, uh, rectal examination or on colonoscopy, we find a low-lying malignancy. And, and those uh, are particularly loathsome um, to uh, patients, to physicians, uh, surgeons, and oncologists because they require more uh, intervention uh, initially after the diagnosis of a rectal malignancy, um, the, the treatment is uh, certainly chemotherapy early on before surgery, followed by radiation therapy, followed by uh, surgery, which sometimes might involve a temporary colostomy, and then more chemotherapy, and then eventually um, uh, taking down of the colostomy and reconnecting uh, everything. So. It's easy to make the point that the best surgery is no surgery. Yeah. I and mean, it's, it, we've never had a better opportunity to make inroads. And I'll say, I know my time is probably drawing to a close, but this is very impactful. Dr. Clark has been doing genetic testing for maybe 20, 25 years. And initially there, there were two or three, four markers. And now there is a tenfold number of markers that they test for genetically. But even so, the thinking is, only 10 to 12 percent of colon cancers are attributable to genetics, and therefore it just hearkens to the fact that we can make a huge impact with weight loss, diet, being careful with what we eat. That information is all out there on the Internet. Uh, certainly if there are questions, um, our office is always um, uh, uh, available. We have a weight loss uh, center, which does not necessarily mean 
uh, one that's going to require a bariatric uh, operation. However, both centers have been profoundly successful, in not only in weight loss, but Dr. Uh, Walkowski, who came to us about a year ago, has been profoundly successful in uh, bariatrics and, and weight loss and has made a huge uh, impact on our community uh, locally. Detecting colon cancer, obviously, uh, earlier, uh, as early as you possibly can, is going to really uh, help to determine your success, uh, your success rate uh, in, in defeating it. Uh, and, and obviously, to, that, that begins with uh, getting, getting the colonoscopy. Uh, and if genetic testing is required or called for, then, then that as well. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, you're right, we are out of time. Uh, but uh, we, we do want folks to get that colonoscopy and uh, to get started on a road where uh, you, can, you can learn about this early uh, and perhaps head it off at the pass. Yeah. You know, everyone, um, it, it's sort of sad to see. I've been at this for a really long time. No matter how resistant patients are to colonoscopies, if uh, they end up with that bad diagnosis, everyone says the same thing. Um, and they wish they had taken action sooner. Um, why me? Um, it's I can't urge anyone more strongly to get involved in their health care. We're seeing colon cancers in younger and younger patients, and that's happening for a reason. He's Dr. Andrew Billen, and uh, to learn more, irmc.org will help you out. And uh, Dr. Billen uh, is available to you. All of the surgical folks at IRMC there to help you. Colonoscopy. Uh, is is the first step uh, for for most of us when we consider the possibility of colon cancer. It is a very very common cancer, very beatable though when detected early. It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160. Fox News is coming up next. Top of the hour, a couple of moments away from now. Josh Woodison is 